The Tenth Level, starring William Shatner and Lynn Carlin, will return. I'm asking you because you'd be extremely valuable, that's why. This is Betty's letter? Yes. And you're being evasive as... I am well. being careful. Which is how I got to have tenure around here long before Black was popular. Hey, is this the picture I took? Yes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> I never could see what she saw in you in the first place. Neither did I. A case of extremely limited fantasy life, I would say. And I would say you're evading the issue, but not successfully. Steve, I love the design. It's audacious. And? Tricky. Very tricky. But you can see why. I can see a lot of things. Maybe more than you can. Like what? Tell me. You haven't considered faculty reaction. I have. Not sufficiently, in my judgment. And there's the risk of possible criticism from outside Rutledge as well. There'll be criticism of anything that breaks new ground. Well, how do you know what subject reaction formations will actually be to the deception may be much more adverse than you've assumed. We'll see. <laughs> Steve, now you know as well as I do that the Federation is hardly going to approve of a work that involves lying to the subjects to the degree called for in your construction. The Federation. Well, well don't be cavalier. Now they're powerful and they are very sensitive to press. You give them cause, they could come down on you with both feet. And without decent credentials, you could wind up teaching in Siberia. Mm. Would that suit your purpose? I don't speak Russian. <laughs> anyway, you don't need me. You'd be very helpful. You have certain specific insights I respect very much, you know that. Stephen, what you're doing is very important, and I'm anxious to see it go. But what's good and right for you may not necessarily be good and right for me to be involved in, for, for a whole host of reasons. But I will be there, and I'll help all I can. I'm very anxious to see what emerges from this. Now, sir, I'm testing. What goes with the word brilliant? That's brilliant. That's incorrect, Mr. Hughes. I know it. It's one pearl, brilliant pearl. I'm going to do the next pairs now. If he gets another one wrong, I'm supposed to go to switch four? That's correct. I got quite a list to get through here. Yes. I could have to go all the way up to here. Let's continue, please. I'm sorry, I can't. I won't. The experiment requires that you do continue. I don't give a damn what the experiment requires. When I answered that ad, I never dreamed I'd be asked to give anybody jolts of electricity for no matter what the cause. We explained the procedure to you in great detail before you took this on. You agreed to cooperate. I didn't realize it'd be like this. Like I've already given that poor guy in there 54 volts. That's it, I'm finished. But you both volunteered. You could be the learner, he could be the teacher. It's just a matter of chance, toss him a coin. Suppose that man in there can't learn. What am I supposed to do, kill him for it? Not for Rutledge University, not for anybody. No one has the right to do this to another human being. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> and 
the next weeks, we've tested as many as 10 subjects a day. We discovered his manifestation laughter was not an uncommon defense against tension. We had many varieties of response, some very surprising. I, I can't, I... I just, I just can't do this anymore. Please I just want remember to remember you please. volunteered to help I us. Know, I know, I know, I know. You fully please. understood the way we were working, and you I agreed to help us realize. what would be demanded of the teacher. Go. I didn't realize to what extent it would go. Oh. <laughs> Stop. Can't we just stop now? We've started. Please. We have to go ahead and do our job, Mrs. Smith. <gasps> All right. Um. I don't want to do this thing. Oh. But it's a job. The professor says so. It's a job. Then this is incredible. You have to do it. Yes. Here. You have to just try to understand. You just Look have to try to understand. Apart. Easy. Uh. I've never seen anything like it. There's been a few, so I can tell you. Can I hurt him anymore? She's not going to pull that neck switch. She won't do it. She's caught. She's caught up in the whole thing. Can't we stop? Can't we just stop now? So who's going to be responsible for him if something happens to him? I will. You're just doing what you came here to do. That's all you have to think about. Don't do this to me. All right. Oh, please. So you have to try to understand. You just have to try to understand. Oh, please. <laughs> in these people, the resistance to going to the end of the line may be the most significant reaction. They just don't come in and sadistically pull those switches, bang, bang. They, they have an inner struggle not to obey. Their own pain is evidence of that. Listen to this. Just listen to this and relate it to the reactions we're getting. Here. Yeah. <laughs> One thing stressed over and over again by Himmler in his speeches to the SS men destined to become concentration camp officers was how they must get over their weaknesses, that what they would be asked to do would give them pain, even though it was obviously the right and important thing to do. They must train themselves to resist that pain. The parallel is hardly direct, but damn it, there's something there. Heinrich Himmler instinctively knew what he must do to turn those men into sanctioned killers. Listen to this. It's uh, an interview in uh, English that just came out from a Frenchman who was a paratrooper in Algeria who handled some of the uh, torture inflicted on the Algerians. He said, uh, I never felt I was doing those things on my own, you understand. I was just a machine working for the army and I did what I had to do because they asked me to, told me to. It was the army who has the responsibility, not me. And anyway, these Arabs brought it on themselves. All they had to do was talk and they would have been given chocolate and croissants. If you're telling me that Mrs. Schnagel and the French paratrooper are the same person. No, I'm telling you that they both had to have the feeling that they didn't have the responsibility. It was an authority. I get your message, Stephen. It's your medium. I saw that woman in great pain. And that's worth thinking about twice. Barbara, do you have any idea how many of these subjects are going all the way and pulling the final switch? Because in the final analysis, some man in a lab coat tells them to. That's what it comes down to. Some man in a lab coat and they're exactly the same kind of people who in prediction said they wouldn't dream of hurting another human being no matter what the conditions that discovery is worth thinking twice about too oh you really do need 100 percent approval don't you 101 well the only place you're going to get that kind of idealization is from certain selected post-grad students it's a little unfair, isn't it? Is it? I have a class. Barbara, Barbara, Barbara. 